Hey everyone, Matt here. I wanted to introduce you to my upscaling script and how to get the most out of it. Uh, first, I wanted to show you the reason why I made it was this goal of converting Google Earth images into a night scene. And if you've used Ultimate Upscaler before, you know that if you put your image in and then add any type of prompt, that prompt will be applied to every single tile. And so I thought, okay, this is going to be a problem because I'm going to end up with this type of tiling result. This is what would occur. And so I would either have artifacts or cars would turn to boats or boats would turn to cars and the rooftops always look like parking lots. So I thought, what if we could have more control over each individual tile? And so that's the reason I really started on this scripting. This was the end result of being able to convert the day to night. And it uses these LoRa's I've been training. So that's a topic for another day. Your typical upscaler, you would have a model that you would use to generate from the one size to the to the bucket size, and then you denoise it. Here this is an image I made in Flux and it's 1K. And then if you were to use say the 4K Ultra Sharp, one of these choices here, you would get without any denoising you get a pretty good result depending on your subject. A lot of times you see these sort of wobbly lines and things like that right in the skin. And so the ultimate upscaler denoises it and makes a new generation from this. Magnific does the same thing. It's working in these buckets. You just don't see it. And it's applying the same sort of approach that I'm demonstrating here. And we have a result from Magnific. I think it looks pretty good. It didn't, you can see some of the errors here where it treated some of those drops as blemishes. And part of that hallucination problem is that no matter what you try often, the close-up sample of these of your image looks like something completely different. In this case, it looks like a bunch of twigs. And it can generate, depending on your denoising, more twigs as opposed to wet hair. And the whole idea here is to avoid that and correct it. Now I'll give you, this is the example from Magnific, and then here's my example that I ran and I remove the prompts that tell it to be twigs and it's not a negative prompt it's still within the the positive prompting and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute and so that's the idea is that you can prompt to say wet and then apply it to all the tiles so there's a universal aspect to this as well so you can see the results I'm pretty happy with these there's a lot of fine hairs and so this is only 4K, and then you can just keep doing that. But in this case, the skin was identified properly as skin and wet. All right, let's do some upscaling. We're going to use the image to image tab in Forge or Automatic 1111. And we have our checkpoint. You can use whatever your favorite checkpoint is right now. And this is a basic image to image task, except that we're going to pass it through the upscaler. And we're going to tell the upscaler what size we want right here and we're using it four times. Your sampling steps don't have to be as high as 40, um, but the rest of these methods, again, whatever your image to image. The idea is to use a combination of the a certain amount of denoise, and we're also gonna use a tile control net in this case, because we're trying to upscale and not make any changes. And this will keep the buckets and tiles looking at the entire and referencing the entire image, so it's cohesive. And we wanna balance between Fine detail and new generation plus our original tile image. So that's why this combination just happens to work pretty well. All right, now we're down to the script. We're setting our tile size and it's approximately 1024, which works well for Flux and SDXL. Drop this down to 512 if you're using SD 1.5, the original. We have an auto scale to help maximize the distribution of the tiles over the whole upscaled image. So you can adjust those here. And then we're going to choose our model. I'm using four times ultra sharp. That's a really popular one. It comes with forge. And that's going to be your pre processor upscaler. Okay. So here we come down to the, the, the main feature and that is the prompt generation for each tile will be created with these detection models. And then we can say whether or not you want short or long prompts. And here's an example of what's was generated for this image. And we have pretty accurate prompts. And what I noticed though, was that here these ones are already corrected, but I needed to remove the words branch and stem and some other things. And that happens all the time. You notice these kind of false positives because again, it's only looking at a small portion 
of your image. And so I want to remove some of these words. So I come down here and I have an automatic filtering that you can quickly select. But if you notice words that are appearing in your prompt list, then remove them and that'll help remove this false positive and these sort of artifacts and hallucinations that can be such a problem with upscaling. So I think that's a big that's kind of a big feature for this this whole process is that you're removing those potential hallucinations uh, when it, when your tiles are generated. And then I added a suffix so that can be universal to each tile. And if you wanted to add a Laura, like fine detail, and if you select the model, in your, it'll appear here in your prefix, and then you can use it for every single tile. You can also make a lot of changes if you wanted to do some really complicated prompting throughout your image. You can replace all these words with like cat or fire or something like that, and it will drag it back into here and it will change your image completely. All right, and then that's it. Once you have all these things set, then you just hit generate and it'll go through and create your buckets. Okay, thanks for watching. If you do find this useful, please leave me a thumbs up, comment below of what else I could add to it, and if it catches on, that'll make a comfy script. Okay, thanks guys. Cheers.